Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the matchless and marvelous name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today I want to share with you about corona. You all may be confused when you hear the word corona. But don't be confused. when you hear the word corona because you may be thinking what this guy is going to speak about corona which we are hearing for last few months and all the messages all the things coming the videos audios coming in our whatsapp is talking about corona no i am not talking about the corona on earth i am talking about the corona in heaven corona means the crown The word corona is borrowed from the Latin word which means garland or crown which is derived from the ancient Greek name corona. Yes, I want to share with you about corona of heaven, the crown in heaven. We all are worried about the corona on earth. What will happen tomorrow? What will you know whether one of us will be infected or not? but i'll tell you all these things which is happening is the fulfillment of the prophecies being told in the bible we are we should as a christian we as a christian should be very thorough about what is written in the bible so we should adhere to it and we should believe that these all things have been controlled by god himself when i talk about corona the crown bible gives us five types of crowns in heaven this does not mean that these are the only crowns in heaven but they are the only crowns mentioned in the bible crowning or rewarding of saints will be in the judgment seat of christ we all will be judged one day we all have to stand before the judgment seat one day so let's not worry about our death on earth will it happen through corona or will something happen to us tomorrow just think that before we die what we have to do on earth to receive these crowns in our life it's very important for us when we when we are worried about the corona on earth are we not thinking about the corona in heaven or the crown in the heaven we have to think what will happen when the earth will be over when the earth will be destroyed when the rapture has hap- happened when the church is taken up when when god when when we all will be standing in front of him the judgment seat whether we will be given the crowns and sent to the eternal heaven or will we we will be shown the way to hell as i told you there are five types of crowns in heaven Isaiah 28 verse 5 says in that day the lord of hosts will become a beautiful crown and a glorious diadem to the remnant of his people the five crowns in heaven i just want to discuss with you and then i will wind up the message the first crown in heaven i want to discuss with you and which we can see in the bible is the incorruptible crown or the imperishable crown it's written in 1st corinthians chapter 9 verse 25 to 27 just want to read 9 verse 25 it says and every man that strives for the mastery in temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible incorruptible crown is a crown for people who brought their body unto subjection discipline their body had self control if we read from 24 to 27 it's very evident what it is written know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receives the prize so run that ye may obtain and every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible i therefore Paul is referring I therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight I not as one that beats the air but I keep under my under my body and bring it into subjection 
lest that by any means when i have preached to others i myself should be a castaway paul uses the word temperate meaning self control and he explained that it is through keeping the body into subjection that you receive an incorruptible crown when while we are at our homes while we are thinking about you no know, when we get the time let's sit in the presence of the lord and let's see whether our life is in a right portion or not are we controlling are we controlling our body are we uh, subjecting our body creating a self control of ourselves he says controlling our tongue controlling how we see controlling what we hear controlling what we think controlling our emotions our legs our hands everything where we go for what we use our hands for what we use our eyes for what we hear use our ears to hear controlling our emotions yes paul is is emphasizing on controlling con- creating a self control and the person who self controls his body who brings you know the word temperate means you know keeping the body into subjection that person is going to receive the incorruptible crown the second crown is the crown of rejoicing it is written in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19 for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even e the presence of our lord jesus christ at his coming the crown of rejoicing will be our crown where god shall wipe all our tears from our eyes there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away we read in revelation 21 verse 4 it is a crown for every saint every saved person salvation is only by grace through faith when we see the crown of rejoicing it means the faithfulness in service there are people who will have more than one type of crowns in heaven there will be people receiving all these five crowns which i am sharing with you there will be people who will be receiving two there will be people who receiving three where we are when we talk about the crown of rejoicing are we going to get it we get rejoicing by an act of service you know a little i just want to give you an example when we when we give something to a poor man when we feed a poor man the the goodness that we feel inside the rejoice the happiness that we feel inside is what we will receive when we reach the, reach in the in front of the judgment seat of god it is something what we have done we have service not by our might but by the faith that god has given us as it written in james the deeds through our faith when we have completed our race when we have completed our service on earth when we reach there will we be rejoicing will we be happy when we receive this crown second is the crown of righteousness the crown of righteousness is written in second timothy chapter 4 verse 7 and 8 it says henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing this is a crown for every person who loves the appearing of jesus christ like timothy a crown for those ready and waiting for jesus christ coming righteousness is only by faith we read in romans 3:24 being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in jesus christ Galatians 5:5 5, 5 says for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Philippians 3:9 says and we found in him not having mind on righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith. 
so it is particularly saying the righteousness which we receive by believing in Christ Jesus crown of righteousness is a crown for every righteous person through grace by faith salvation is only through grace by faith and every person in Jesus Christ is justified and righteous and waiting for the final salvation when Jesus appears this crown is particularly given to a person with who has faith in Jesus Christ and who is hoping for the second coming of Christ it's not for a person who believed who are baptized and then have forgotten that Jesus is going to come and living a wayward life and life showing a fake life showing to coming to the church or coming to you know uh, coming before the christians and showing that oh, i'm a good christian i'm a good christian i'm doing all the things right no this crown is not for that person this crown is for a person who in faith is doing services in faith believing in the work of god and in in the in in faith he is waiting and he is hoping for the coming of christ this crown is given to that person the fourth one is the crown of glory the crown of glory it is written in first peter 5 verse 2 it says feed the flock of god which is among you taking the oversight thereof not by constraint but willingly not for filthy but of a ready mind neither as being lords over god's heritage but being ensamples to flock and when the chief shepherd shall appear he shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away the crown of glory is a crown for every person who feeds the flock the pastors the apostles the prophets evangelists teachers ministers and every person carrying out the great commission it is a crown for peter's pauls johns and every god servant preaching the gospel to every creature go ye unto the world and preach the gospel to every creature this crown i am fighting for remaining strong in faith and preaching the gospel no matter what comes my way as i strongly guard my crown my heart rejoices when i remember the great reward awaiting me in heaven the crown of glory you know this particularly is not you know when we think the crown of glory when we think feeding the feeding the flock we think that it's only about pastors no it's not only about the pastors prophets and apostles and all those it's for them who are preaching who are preaching the gospel to the world who are following the great commission that jesus has given us go ye into the world and preach teach and baptize in my name who is preaching also is given this reward this crown of glory it is the faithfulness intending those are interested to you and the last but not the least the crown of life or the corona of life we all are worried about this virus let's worry about the crown of life it's written in james 1 verse 12 it says blessed is the man that endures temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the lord hath promised to them that love him revelation 2:10 says fear none of those things which thou shall suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days be thou faithful unto death and i will give the a crown of life crown of life is a crown for people who have patiently endured all the trials testing and persecution it is for the people who bravely confront persecution for jesus christ even to the point of death we uh, we have seen an example in the bible it's stephanus stephanus what has happened to stephen just see what has happened to stephen he boldly faced the persecution and he saw the son the christ standing on the right side of god he was with all of glory his body was full of glory and light when people saw him so he boldly faced the situation 
are we witnessing our christ are we witnessing are we enduring the trials and testing it comes when the temptations comes it's the faithfulness in the temptation that gives us the crown of life all the temptations of our life the desires of our heart the desires or the desire of our heart mind and what we want in our life we are going behind the wealth we are going behind the luxuries of this life if we are faithful in all these temptation when these trials and temptation comes when we are overcoming it the crown of life is kept for us the crown of life is for who is bravely confronting persecution not only that he is enduring trials and testing and persecutions you know when i have explained all these five crowns let's look at ourselves let's find whether we will be receiving any one of this crown when we reach in in front of the judgment seat of god when i talk about the judgment seat of god it's the bema of christ bema means an elevated platform which is in greek you know it's an elevated platform or or the judgment seat of christ the bema of christ is the judgment seat of christ in jewish jewish people says the bema is an it's a place where the orator stands it's a podium raised just around the sanctuary uraron kodesh as told in you know jewish culture and custom when we will stand before the judgment why did this judgment is kept we may be thinking why this judgment is kept the purpose of this judgment is not to determine whether a particular person enters the heaven or not for every man's eternal destiny is already determined before he leaves this life in addition the purpose of the judgment is not to punish believers for sins committed either before or after their salvation but the purpose of this bema judgment or the judgment seat of christ is to determine whether or not a believer has been a faithful steward i want to give you an example if a person is running in a race he is running to get a position everyone wants to become first and everyone is running but when the line is crossed the final line is crossed one person gets first second and third accordingly but here god is saying i have not kept a race for you that you all when you all will be running you will get first god is not worried about are you reaching there first or second it's about reaching there in a proper way he is looking how you have run the race it is important to reach the final destination yes it is important but it is important how you ran the race to reach that destination god is worried about the intention god is worried about god is seeing whether the person has ran the race in a nicer way in a good way according to the commandment i have told him according to the rules and regulations that i have given him yes brothers and sisters when we all are worried about the corona on earth let's worry about the corona which is in heaven the rewards which we are going to receive and i'll tell you brothers and sisters this is the time to be serious this all signs this all pestilences about the war is going on about the economic crisis everything it states the coming of the christ it's very evident let's prepare ourselves let's not be like others who are not worried what is going to happen tomorrow enjoying their lives eating drinking enjoying giving their uh, their sons and daughters in marriage and getting up and enjoying enjoying the life no god has given us a purpose in our lives god has asked us to look at us once again check ourselves are we worthy of these crowns and if we are running a good race 
Yes, definitely we are going to receive this crown. Brothers and sisters, I want to end this message just to read one verse from the Bible. It says, Revelations chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him who is seated on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Here it is very evident. The elders, the 24 elders, will lay their crown before God because they know the importance of these crowns and they will keep it in the feet of God. For what? Because for God is more important than all the crowns that we are going to receive. So let's wait for the time. Let's prepare for the time when we will see the face of our Lord. When we together will enjoy His presence. I want to end by singing this song. We fall down, we lay our crown at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of His mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Yes, brothers and sisters, we are giving our crowns. We are going to give our crowns at the feet of Jesus. But think and prepare whether we will be able to receive these crowns when we reach in heaven, when we stand in front of the judgment seat. Let's prepare ourselves for receiving these crowns. Let's run the race with efficiency, with regulations, with commandments which has been given to us. Let's follow that. Let's leave about what is going to happen on this world. Let's think about the eternal life which is going to, which we are going to receive after our death. The body will be gone. We are waiting for the time when we will see our Father in heaven, rejoicing and gladly worshipping His name. Let's prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. May God bless us with these words. Amen.